Hey there, ghoulies. My name's Sukane, and I'm your local vampire. Hi, my name is Sammy, and I am your local demon. Hello. <laughs> and welcome to our spook hour. So, today, we decided we are going to switch it up a tiny itty bitty bit from what you guys are used to, I, I guess, from us in the four episodes we've done. Where uh A, we're high, we're 2D today, we're not 3D. <laughs> then uh we've decided to uh talk about a uh a, a true crime case today because I was feeling true crimey today. <laughs> She's feeling like a detective. Hundred <laughs> percent. Detective Stokey to Det the rescue. <laughs> detective Stokey on the case. <laughs> Also, we wanted to kind of let you guys know that originally how we were going to do the podcast and stuff was we were going to do it every week. And we've just decided that that's kind of a lot since I was sick and stuff around Christmas time. And then I got sick again and I caught the vid, guys. I caught COVID. So one of the Sundays I was sick with that. And then the next Sunday I just kind of wasn't feeling it. So then we decided we were just going to do it every other Sunday basically you'll still we're gonna have them we're gonna record on a sunday and i'm gonna try and have them go up on a sunday so it'll either go up the same sunday that we record or it'll go up like the next sunday i figured just so you guys kind of know and aren't expecting one every week anymore we were both thinking the same thing at the same time because we're gaming wifeys and that's what we do <laughs> but we we're thinking it would just be easier editing wise and stuff so that i'm not rushed to edit it and it also just gives us a break so we don't have to do it every Sunday if we don't want to kind of. It works out. We're just busy, busy human slash demon vampire. You get it. <laughs> so it just, it gives us time in between to make better content for you to come up with ideas and prepare better, you know? Yeah. We want it to be crispy for you guys. Yeah, hey, crispy. <laughs> crispy crispy so you guys will have to let us know down below if you like the 2d versions like this better or if you like it better in vr chat let us know well we might switch back and forth um kind of just since i've been sick i haven't been in vr chat and as much as i love my headset it does kind of hurt my head after a while today we've decided we're going to talk about the jessica easterly case and um i will kind of give you guys a rundown of what happened to her and the whole case itself and then we'll kind of talk about like how we feel about it and whatever because true crime always makes me makes my makes my blood boil especially in this case for sure, for sure. just watched a whole documentary if you guys haven't watched it you should go check out kendall ray's documentary called 530 days on youtube she does a lot of true crime stuff with her husband and they went out and spoke with her family and tried to speak to her husband, and uh, it was actually very interesting. It made me angry by the end of it. But uh, true crime makes everybody angry, I feel like, or sad, or both. I'm not really sure. Well, true crime can always be difficult, right? Because you, they, it's not always that the case is solved. So a lot of things can be unsettling because you want the family to be able to have peace and comfort and it's not always the situation. Yeah, exactly. Like this case is one of those where it is a cold case. It has not been solved. And I think you guys will see by the end of it, you guys can tell me who you think did it. But there's kind of only one suspect in my head from what I know of the case and nothing has been done really at all by the new orleans police department and i think that that's pretty shitty i feel like a lot of true For crime sure. i feel like a lot of true crime is like that though where you if it's a like an unsolved case it's a lot of like oh the police didn't do anything or didn't do a lot or they could have done more and i mean i'm not a police officer i don't know what goes into this stuff so don't come at me okay but i feel like in a lot of cases like these the police could have done more and they didn't and had they done more, dead people might still be around and we wouldn't be talking about their case. Yeah, I think one of the hardest things, too, is that like when there's a body involved, it takes a long time for the investigation, especially when they have to autopsies. So 
with that, even that in itself takes a really long time process. And not only that, but releasing the body itself takes a really long process. So during that time, a lot of things can be happening. And I'm assuming that that's where a lot of things get like lost in the loophole with like evidence and stuff because it's just it takes forever to like to, it seems like it takes forever just to get something done like and I just feel like I get it there's a lot of processing going on on the whole thing but I just feel like this is a family that is concerned and they can't have any peace and they can't rest because it's just not being done the proper way in mm -hmm. my eyes yeah exactly as i kind of read you guys the timeline here and i'll give you the dates as well we'll kind of give you like the gist like i said and then we'll go from there but this case is definitely one of those where i feel like if the police had done something or if you know people had i i don't know like if if things had been done differently she might still be here today and that's why mm -hmm. I kind of want to talk about it, because at one point in time, there was only four pages worth if you Googled her name on like what was going on with her. Now, I guess there's more. I didn't it didn't give me pages. It just I scrolled a lot. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's one of those things when it comes to true crime that it gets really irritating. And this is one of those ones that irritates. So I will put out a trigger warning. Just true crime stuff is usually kind of triggering. Domestic abuse will be mentioned. If that's not the kind of thing you want to listen to, then this might be uh, better for you guys to skip. Or I can put a timestamp when I stop talking about that if I talk about it in depth at all, which I probably won't. The only thing I will make one comment on is that for domestic abuse and i'm really sad in the justice system for this is a lot of times it's a little too late and i don't think the justice system is harder on domestic violence i feel like it slips through the cracks and when somebody really needs help they say there's hope out there but it's it truly is limited with things and when I say limited, I mean resources wise and feeling comfortable and safe and confident to tell somebody your situation. In the case with stuff like that, with having order protection and stuff, it's very limited because it's a piece of paper. And most people feel like not to go through with things like this because they just don't feel like they're they're gonna be heard so i do hope that the justice system will crack down on situations like this and protect people more so that they feel safe and that they can go and feel protected in the end you know i think there could be a lot more done with that domestic violence or any type of violence in itself i think there could be a stronger uh protection for people in need of stuff like that so yeah definitely for sure for sure when it comes to any of that stuff yeah there's your i guess trigger warning for that so i'm just gonna get right into it uh i will have it linked down below but i am on the justiceforjessica.org site and it tells you the whole timeline so if you guys want to like follow along with me i'm not going to read it word for word because obviously i didn't write it and i will source it down below so i don't get in shit. but <laughs> that is what i'm using to kind of remind myself of what all happened here basically it starts off with jessica confiding in her friend maria that she wanted to leave her husband she was tired of basically being abused he i guess hit her and she was tired of his antics he, sound, he seems like a really, really strange man. Uh, like I said, I watched the documentary, Kindle and Josh's documentary. It was He was very weird. Like they had body cam footage in there from the police coming to ask about her and stuff. And it was really awkward. Yeah, so she had made up her mind. She was ready to start over. And so she had, on August 12th, she called Maria, her friend, three times. She was like frantic and freaking out and had asked Maria to come get her. Unfortunately, Maria was not able to go that day because she lives two states away and had kids and stuff and wasn't allowed to just like couldn't just leave and go help her. So she made a plan with Jessica that the next day she would come after she dropped her kids off at school and pick her up. And so then the next day there were no calls or texts from Jessica at all and didn't get a response back, which 
Maria has stated that that is very, very not like her friends, especially right after you get something like that. Like that would be, that would be pretty spooky. So that was sure. the 13th. And then the 14th, uh, Justin, which was Jessica's husband, messaged Maria through Jessica's Facebook account saying that Jessica was missing and that Jessica had left her phone, keys, and ID card at home. And like that seems weird like especially if you wanted to leave your husband for like whatever the reason may be you would take your phone and your keys like those are pretty important things you wouldn't just leave things like that at home so already before we've even gotten very far in this story at all that is weird to me like i feel like if you're going to leave or if you're gonna if you're planning on leaving your husband like it says she was why would she leave her phone and her keys and her id like those are all things that you're gonna need in everyday Very life pretentious. yeah that's really really weird so i'm just gonna scroll down real fast and see what the messages say i feel like those are like essentials like everybody would grab right everybody would mm -hmm. be like okay phone id and keys yeah so with not having that there or her not having it there and not grabbing it is just like a red flag right there yeah definitely super weird and why is he messaging maria through jessica's account like you know what i mean like why why would he not just message her through his own phone number or his own facebook mm -hmm. like it doesn't really make much sense for him to be using her account like maybe he thought i don't know like maybe he had the thought it was a good idea to message through jessica so she'd answer like i don't know but that again in itself seems suspicious i think it felt like if i was thinking in his mind it was reassurance like mm -hmm. if you think about it so like it, he basically was reassurance like oh, okay everything is okay still you know yeah it looks like on january 15th he message and i guess this is actually jessica it says hey i need to talk to you about this weekend i'm hiding in the bathroom right now so justin doesn't hear me we've been fighting like fighting for the past three days about everything he's threatened to kick me out put me in jail he's hit me it's bad he told me you guys can't come or it's gonna be worse for me hello i'm so sorry i know it's last minute and i feel awful i don't know what to do i can recommend somewhere that's reasonable and nice and be on the canal we stayed there a lot or used to Lo, i'm scared so that was that was at the beginning of the year i'm assuming that was 2019 it doesn't say but then on august 12th is when she got the three calls Maria answered and said, I'm going to talk to Jonathan about everything tonight when we get home from her kids practice. And Jessica said, hang on, I don't know what's going to happen when I get home. And then now this is Justin messaging her saying is just with you. Grace and I are worried if anybody's confused. Grace is Justin's daughter, like Jessica's not her biological mom. But it was said by her family that she she thought of her as her own daughter. And then it says, if so, that's fine. We just don't know where she is. And Grace can't handle stress like this right now. And so Maria said, no, she's not. When was the last time you spoke to her? Justin said, about noon today. At, and she left everything here. Keys, car, keys, car, ID, money. And Maria said, what about her phone? Justin said, here too, effing weird, worry, worried. She's never done this. I have no idea. Checked everything and everyone I know. Okay, well, I'm sending the police over there, says Maria. Justin says, okay, but you're, gonna, you're going to freak Grace out. But before I continue reading that, first of all, you should be freaked out. If you're freaked out enough that you're asking her friends where she is, you know she's missing. So I assume the kid would already be freaked out. And I can understand you worrying about your kid and stress and stuff i can understand that but like what you don't want her friend to send the police over there because she's going to freak out your daughter like what <laughs> that just doesn't make any sense to me i mean why contact her friends if her friend said hey no i haven't seen her why would you not want to get in contact with the police it's you know yourself like the first second i know one of my family members is missing and i've made it clear to everyone that i've checked in that may know her and they haven't seen her i'm going to be calling the police straight away because 
I'm going to be like, where is this family member? Right. Like, mm-hmm. that's the logical thing to do. But to, for me and any kind of crime case that I've ever seen, somebody waiting to call the cops is always very suspicious and guilty. Mm hmm. And like that, like I said, like he he's already acting weird. And like we haven't even gotten through a bunch of the texts yet, but he's already acting really weird and it just seems suspicious to me. So then Maria says Extremely. Yeah. So then Maria says, if Jonathan came home from work and all my stuff was here and the kids didn't know where I was, he was he would already be talking to the police. So Justin says, I know how to file a missing persons report. Do you think I hurt her or something? The police can't do anything until 24 hours. She's an adult. I'm checking hospitals and jails now. Both hospitals, both jails, not at any of them. Called police and missing persons is 24 hours after, after last seen to file report. I have got to be missing something. So while he's not wrong, I have heard that if you try to, if you try to file a missing persons report, like immediately, no matter what you tell them the situation is, Almost always they say, oh, well, maybe she went to a friend's house. Maybe she's at her parents. Like, Mm -hmm. almost always Mm -hmm. they tell you to wait the 24 hours. So he is not incorrect saying that. But I feel... I think unless it's a child. I think unless it's a child, it's a different situation. But you're right. If it's an adult situation, yes, it has to be like 24 hours before they can actually take action and start looking. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in this story, you'll see that the poli- I feel like the police didn't do anything at all. But anyways, we'll, can- we'll continue. So then Justin says, I'm about to go full out on social media and every other asset I have to find out if my wife is safe. I have a child throwing up and needs to know her mom's okay. Here is the missing persons report. If you know where she is and that she's okay, I would appreciate you telling me before all the world knows about our personal problems. And then he sent a picture of the of the missing person report. So this was the next day, I should I should say, after the twenty after he said the thing about the twenty four hours. This is the next day that he sent her the the missing persons report and stuff. And then he says, This is really messing up Grace, um, not to mention other people too. So then Maria answers and said, If she left because you're an asshole to her, I'm a hundred percent supportive of her doing that. The problem I'm having is I'm the person she would call and I haven't heard from her since Monday. So either some random person in this big dangerous city you live in has taken my friend or you lost your shit because she was trying to leave from my point of view. Because honestly, I can't even name one single other friend that she has left. It doesn't make sense that she would leave and not tell me something. And his response was, you're right. Mm -hmm. As always, it's all about you. Thanks for helping her and us in this. And she says, don't even. If I hear anything from her, I'll be sure you know she's safe for Grace's sake. And he says, plenty human of you. So already he's fighting with Maria. And this is like the next day. And then she said, any word yet? I noticed some videos posted by her account on Friday. And he said, I was trying to keep up, uh, keep Grace's spirits up. I didn't know that they posted. That's why I'm not fucking with Facebook. That is the gist of that when he was talking to her and stuff on the the 14th to like before they found her body basically so that was on the 14th that he messaged her from from jessica's facebook which i just think is so weird and then august 22nd very weird like just i i i'm assuming he had his own facebook like i don't understand why he wouldn't just message her from there instead of from jessica's like it just I don't know. That seems just really weird to me. Like, guys, let me know in the comments down below if you think that's normal. But I feel like if I went missing and my boyfriend was messaging people from my account, that just is weird. Like, I don't know. That just seems really strange. But very true. Very, very, very true. I don't know. On the 22nd, Jessica's sisters, Amanda and Amanda and Audrey and their cousin Doug went to New Orleans to talk to the detectives. And before, before um, talking to detectives, they decided they were just going to look around her neighborhood to kind of like figure out where a search party could look for her. Because obviously when you arrange a search party, I mean, I don't know, I've never been part of one, but I would assume that you would need places that you think she could be, where they could organize the, sh- the search party. 
And while they were looking around the streets of Kenilworth and Orleans, they found Jessica's body just two and a half blocks from her house. So they called the police and Jessica's body was picked up by the coroner. Basically then from the 22nd to September 1st, there's not really much going on. As you can see, as we were talking about, from the 22nd to the 1st of September, there isn't really anything that's being done from the sounds of it from this timeline. Maybe it's just not written in the timeline, but there you go. Her body was picked up on the 22nd. Then on the 1st, the Alabama police took a swab of Jessica's mom's DNA to send to the New, or New Orleans police, and they said they cannot begin an investigation until the body's identification has been confirmed through DNA. So that's why they got the DNA. Then on the 2nd, Justin finally calls Jessica's parents for the first time since her disappearance. So he hasn't talked to them for like over a month, well almost a month, from when she went missing, never mind that they found her body. Which, again, is suspicious. Like, why? It's awkward. Yeah. Like, I, I would hope, I mean, I, my parents are no longer here, but I would hope that if something happened to me, my boyfriend would be telling whoever he could to try and figure out like what what's going on with me in the case of finding my body you think he would be telling everybody he knows and being like justice for my girlfriend you know like stuff like that this guy's just acting really suspicious if you will and about a month goes by and in october it was discovered that when they received jessica's mom's dna they placed it on a desk without sending it to the lab and the reason for not sending it to the lab was no one knew where it went so they lost the dna that was collected to identify the body as jessica's for over a month and it wasn't discovered until october that this happened that is ridiculous i don't know like you trust your police service or detectives or whatever to protect you to like go into investigations and figure stuff out like this and to read shit like this just is crazy to me like how do it's just you professional and irresponsible in my opinion a hundred percent how do you leave it on a desk and not send it to the lab because you guys lost it it should be going straight to the lab it shouldn't be on a desk it shouldn't be it shouldn't be left anywhere it should be given straight to the lab ideally you know so like that part right there is crazy so now we're in we're 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 at november november 8th is a received received official confirmation from the dna that it is jessica so it took them three months to figure out that that body was jessica's so her body was with the coroner for like three months Crazy. Well, I guess two because it was at the end of August, but that's still that's ridiculous. And it was all because they lost the DNA in the first place. Like what? I just that is just crazy not, to me as it is. Not only that, but the way it works here is that like the body cannot be released right away either after like the autopsy is performed. Like it takes time for the body to be released too mm -hmm. as well. Yeah. And I think we'll get to that because uh, it will tell us who the body was released to and other things that make me just angry. So then in December, Justin created two GoFundMe accounts asking for help to pay for Jessica's funeral. One is under Jessica's legal name and the other is under a name used for their adult content, Vivian. So in case you guys didn't know, Justin and Jessica had... I don't know if it was like a like a fansly, uh, an OnlyFans. I don't know if OnlyFans was even around in 2019. Some sort of adult content. They had multiple accounts, and so he created the GoFundMe. One in Jessica's name, and one in the adult content's like alias name. And said on the GoFundMe account that if you donate, you will receive exclusive pictures, videos, lingerie, and even shoes of her so if you donate help me pay for my wife's funeral i will give you nudes of her basically depending on the tier of like how much you donate that is also disgusting for one 
I don't want a dead it's person. Sad. It's sad. Personal stuff and or like nudes. And why would you do that? With like she's your wife, you want to send like pictures like that to people? Like I know that you did adult content, but like, damn, no. It's very I, morbid. Yeah, very. And it's like I think that it was. I think that maybe he saw it as an incentive for people to donate maybe i don't know but or that's he still... was just looking to get money any way he could yeah i mean people, it seems that people way people will buy anything nowadays i know it's a little <laughs> bad honestly but yeah so like that that part's just weird um then on the 15th of january 2020 the coroner lists cause and manner of death as undetermined so they don't know how she died and the body will be released to Justin. Again, guys, remember Justin is her weird ass husband. That is weird again that they don't know how she died because I I don't know. When I was watching the documentary, Kendall and uh, Josh's documentary, they said that the autopsy report, the autopsy report that they were given was very bare bones. It didn't have like it should have a like, you know, a diagram of the body which then would show, you know, like where, what was injured, the injuries on the body and where, you know, and that wasn't there in their autopsy report. So super, like all of this is just super weird and nothing super crazy happens for the next little while. It's January 24th, 2020, that her stepfather, Rick Schmidt and sister Audrey go to uh, New Orleans to meet with detectives. They are told that this is now considered a cold case and later that day justin is detained for a 24-hour observation after a woman in a bar also named jessica is approached and given a note by justin he said he was acting crazy and he told her his wife's name was jessica and she committed suicide he insists she takes she take all jessica's clothes her co-worker recognized his name from the online post regarding jessica's death not only is he trying to pawn off his wife's clothes and nudes and other things to people not very long after like she's been found and so on and so forth he is now talking to another woman with the same name telling her that she should take all of his his dead wife's clothes like what that part wasn't in there she didn't mention that that at all but that is that is extra weird again why would you want to get rid of like i don't know maybe people will deal with death differently but i just feel like he is being really weird and the fact that someone is saying like he was acting crazy and stuff like that like that's all just super weird and i don't know like i have dealt with death a bit and i never want to give away anything or get rid of anything that was my loved one's stuff so i just i think that's really just weird that he wants to give it away and to another lady named jessica who knows nothing about anything going on like that's just i don't know that's weird his behavior is just not like the typical person losing a loved one like mm -mm. it's not a normal like response like anything he's doing and i'm not saying that nobody can be that way because everybody reacts different to death you know mm -hmm. or finding out things but his reactions are just really off of like what a normal person's behavior would be when they lose somebody that they love you know yeah like it's just it's it's very strange very strange just weird behavior and again like i'm sure people could be like oh well he's grieving and while you're not incorrect i don't think that somebody acts this way when they lose somebody like it just it seems too weird because it's got stuff so it's got his name on it um he's got like his email his phone numbers that he has a daughter named grace at the top um and then he's got like these are the purse brand names these are the shoes these are the clothes like stuff like that and then he's like i have some furniture that i don't need um there's a dresser a hope chest like whatever and then he's like got questions do you like to shoot and then in brackets guns do you like knives in brackets tactical like the fuck do you 
drive or want to learn if you i'm sorry i cannot really read that if you and your husband are into any of this please let me know and then he's got more stuff about shoes and shit i'm assuming that's the stuff he wants to get rid of i don't know but like who acts like that i just see <laughs> See, that's very suspicious to me. And the fact that he's getting rid of her things makes me feel like, are you getting rid of evidence? Like, are you getting rid of, like, stuff that you feel that can have, like, you know, DNA? I mean, they have her DNA. I mean, like, they can find whatever they can on the body. But, like, I just feel like him getting rid of everything is, like, literally trying to completely wipe her out of his life yeah and like you said even grieving everybody grieves their own way i just don't see this as like typical grieving like you would get rid of some of your uh most of your loved one's stuff for money it just doesn't yeah. seem okay to me i guess yeah and it's just really it's also just really fucked up that this poor other innocent woman ironically also named jessica has to go through this and he's just like oh yeah like here you want my wife's clothes like you should have them because you're also named jessica like what <laughs> i just i don't i don't know like that's just really he's acting really weird and just not something is not right here it Out continues behavior mm -hmm. yeah it continues to get weirder too so remember i told you guys that they didn't know how she died on the 31st of january 2020 they released their autopsy report and it says that she suffered a fractured nose, broken jaw, broken rib, and a broken C4 vertebra, which is in your neck. So that tells me that clearly something happened to her. This wasn't just a random weird trauma. Yeah, this wasn't a random weird like trauma, you know, like something something happened here. Well, it was a lot of, like, blunt force trauma, and mm. that can be lots of possibilities, but to have a broken nose, a broken jaw, a broken neck, to me, it I feel like she was attacked. Like, those are blunt force trauma things that happen. The only other thing that I can think of, like, what stuff like that happens, like, when somebody's in a car accident, and I, I don't believe she was in a car accident so i do believe that she was hurt by somebody like it's just yeah. the way it's what happened to her that makes me feel that way yeah like it's just i don't know like that that part in itself is very strange that like that she had trauma like blunt force trauma like you said so clearly something bad uh really happened to her and like like you said unless it was a car accident which from where she was found next to railroad tracks like not on a road i don't think it was a car accident i think personally at this point i think that her husband beat her up and probably murdered her and then just left her there because he is acting so weird like yeah okay he did the whole oh my god like where is she like is she okay she's never done this before blah 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 blah. he did that part but then the rest of it is just really weird and awkward and whatever like it just it doesn't make any sense and just how everything has been dealt with so far is also very weird i i don't know i guess on the 15th of March in 2020, a couple in the neighborhood Lakeview where they lived contacted Audrey to say that they had found Jessica's ID and a blanket. And Audrey calls the detective to tell him what the couple found just 15 yards from where Jessica's body was several months earlier. And the detective says he wants to talk to the couple about where the items were found. Audrey hears nothing. There's no, nobody's told her anything. So April 7th, she calls uh, the Lakeview couple to follow up with them and ask what happened and like what they told them, I guess. And the couple tells Audrey that nobody contacted them and the police, there's no, there's been no police presence near where they found the stuff. So already, it seems to me that the police just aren't doing anything. It's like they don't care. And 
that is crazy to me. Like, again, the police are supposed to serve and protect the people of whatever city it is they work in or whatever district it is. And they're failing Jessica's family and anybody trying to figure out what the heck happened to her. Like, this is almost a year later and like her sister was like oh hey like somebody found some evidence and the detective's like okay like i'll talk to the couple and then nobody contacted that couple like i can understand that miscommunication might be a thing maybe they didn't have the right information like who knows right but that just seems really irresponsible and unprofessional Yes, very unprofessional, very, very un lackluster with stuff like you can tell like this department, which is doing this investigation needs training. You can tell like there was just a lot of cracks in the system and mm -hmm. it, it honestly they're failing this family and it's really, really sad. But this just goes to show you like our justice system is just it's not where it needs to be and like where we need to protect people and we need to help people it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing so like unfortunately in this situation this family is suffering because they weren't able to do their job properly yeah exactly and they don't have the closure that you you need when you when you lose somebody so mm -hmm. On the 14th of April, Audrey filed a formal complaint with the Public Integrity Bureau for failing to properly investigate the death, which, I mean, good for her, mm -hmm. because clearly mm -hmm. they didn't. Like, we still don't know what's going on other than she's got a broken nose, neck, and jaw. But, like, okay, how, why, what happened, like, you know? And then nothing new happens until August 6th of 2020, where she finally hears back from the Public Integrity Bureau four months after filing the formal complaint, even though several phone calls and messages were left. She talked to E. Creighton, informed that an investigation is being conducted for not properly investigating. So she's being told four months later, after nobody said anything to her, that, okay, we're investigating why it wasn't properly investigated. Like, okay, mm -hmm. at least they're doing something, but, like, it took you four months to do that? Like, again, I don't know how the police system works, and I don't live in the States, so maybe it is completely different here. I don't know how it works here. I don't know how it works there. But I think that four months, not hearing anything at all, and then to be told, oh, yeah, okay, like, we're investigating it. Like, okay, you couldn't have told her that after she filed it. You couldn't have... Like, I'm sure things take time, but they do. could you not at least reach out to the family or whoever it was that filed that thing and say, hey, like, we got to go through this process, but by this time or like within this certain amount of time, we will start investigating and then and then like contact her and say, OK, like it's being conducted now. We're investigating why it wasn't properly investigated. Like, again, it just seems like the police just don't give a shit. Well, and you make a valid point because the more time you waste, the more time evidence just gets out of, like, thrown out, you know? The more time you waste, the more time it's harder to get what you need to investigate. Mm -hmm. And it's like... Time is not your friend when things like this happen. And I just felt like they wasted so much time on being so unprofessional, losing evidence, losing this, or it's just, it's giving whoever did this the upper hand. And that's definitely not what you want to do in a scenario like this. But like, this is what I'm saying. Like they need to fix the justice system. They need to fix, 
they need more training my my suggestion is is that they need to retrain they need to train better they need to it's just there's so many things involved in it and people are going to be like well you don't know you don't work in the system no i don't but i do know that you're supposed to uphold the law and by that you're supposed to have better trained people that know what they're doing and can take stuff like this seriously and i just feel like the new or new orleans police just didn't care enough about this situation like and you can see by how the way they fumbled through this whole like this whole escapade of things <laughs> yeah and also do remember that this is now a year later and her body is still in the morgue at this point. So everyone mm -hmm. keep that in mind. Her, mm -hmm. her body is still in the morgue. Keep that in mind because I will, we'll touch on that in a little bit. But that's actually, I'm looking at the timeline and it's about to come up. So um, then on September 1st, so again, almost a month later, a couple in Lakeview, the ones that found the, the ID and the blankets, Text Audrey and says that Detective Lund finally reached out to them. This is 170 days later. That is absolutely ridiculous. And sad. It's very sad. It's like we're literally giving you evidence. And, and you're discarding you're, it. You're, you're, you're discarding, discarding it. it. Yeah, you're like you're not even... Sammy's right when she says that you only have a certain amount of time, especially with evidence, because... The longer it stays out there, because she was found outside, the longer it stays out there, the longer it's put against the evidence, or not the evidence, sorry, the elements, and mm -hmm. it's just sitting outside, baking in the sun. Anything that you might be able to use from that is going to be gone. Also, do remember exactly. that Justin said that Jessica left her ID at home. Yes. So how did her ID get there? Is what I want to know. There's just a lot of holes in the story, whether it becomes from the detective or Justin's or just the whole mix around itself. Mm -hmm. There's just so many holes in the place of like how irresponsible people were in this situation. Yeah. So, like, there's it's just it's already crazy. On September 13th, this is that Jessica's body has been at the morgue since August 22nd, 2019. So it has been at the morgue for a year and like a month, which is far too long. 388 days. Like, what the fuck? It was released already. Why did her husband not claim it and do whatever mm -hmm. it is you do from there? Like, you are already looking for money for her funeral. You kind of need the body for that, do you not? Like, you know, it. Yeah. So in that situation, he might not have been able to because if they're still unfortunate the way it works here, and like this is why I say I get frustrated with the system here, the process of them like doing like their investigation, they can't release the body until the inve until the investigation is completely if I'm, like done in a sense and because they're still investigating they won't be able to release the body yeah because earlier it said that they released it to, to him so he's not claiming it yeah it was real it was jessica's body will be released to justin on january 15th of 2020 now we're in at, at september 13th and he hasn't claimed it that is interesting I right? don't know. I don't know why he wouldn't claim it then if it was released. Yeah, I'm not really sure. So they, I guess they keep her. At, they keep them at the morgue until they're picked up. So I don't know. That's weird. So then, on October 20th, 2020, crime scene investigators were called to Jessica's house. They took a sample of a futon that was thrown out for trash pickup, waiting on results. Then November 27th, they're still waiting on the forensics to come back for the futon. And there was also a headboard that was in Jessica's room that was thrown out for trash pickup. They're hoping to have it by the end of the year. And at this point, Jessica has been in the morgue for 463 days. Then on December 24th, oh shit, Christmas Eve 2020, they are still waiting 
for forensics to come back on those things that they collected and Jessica's body has now been in the morgue for 490 days. Like, what is going on here? Why would you not just claim your wife? I don't understand. The 2nd of February, 2021, the coroner finally released Jessica to them, like her family, because they couldn't contact the husband. The husband would not come pick her up. I guess they kept trying to contact him and he didn't pick up or wouldn't answer them or whatever. So she was in the morgue for 530 days. And as she says, my sister is home. Then on the 16th of February, 2021, they had a small get together with immediate family because of COVID. Um, they couldn't have like a bigger one. March 20th, 2021, five months and still waiting on forensics to come back on the futon and the headboard. That is ridiculous. Again, I don't know how long this stuff takes, but I'm pretty sure it does not take five months. And they've already lost evidence once. Well, DNA, but that still, to me, counts as evidence in a case like this. So they've already failed the system, or failed the family, if you will, by not knowing what the cause of death was. Then saying, okay, well, this is like what we found, but whatever and then five months waiting for forensics is absolutely ridiculous then um april 14 2021 601 days with no answers no accountability no arrest she feels like her sister's just a case number and a box uh, or a box of files being stored with dust on it hashtag we the people should not have to fight the justice system for justice hashtag fix the system I agree. As I said, <laughs> the craziness. And in May 2021, she started an online petition for the New Orleans District Attorney Jason Williams, the People's DA, to investigate the death of my sister Jessica. After a story of Jessica was released by YouTuber Kendall Ray, within 48 hours, I was contacted by the DA for a meeting. The meeting has taken place, but we are un unable to contact at time. We're waiting for results. Still, on the couch and headboard dear god also i will put the petition if you guys would like to sign it in the description i signed it like before we started talking about this <laughs> then in june of 2021 the results finally came back and they found nothing on the headboard and futon but if you look at the pictures of the headboard and the futon like that headboard is well worn out like it looks like it's wood and like the paint or some shit is coming off of it. And that futon's got a fucking hole in it. Like, and it's dirty as shit. And you found nothing? I think that that is suspicious as well. But I mean, who knows? On the 21st, they had the funeral. August 21st. August 25th, District Attorney Jason Williams held a press conference at the corner of uh, Kenilworth and Orleans, which is where they found Jessica. It was a very huge step in the investigation and the first time that Jessica's case was called a homicide and they are investigating as a homicide. So it took them over a year to, to make this a homicide and to declare that she was murdered. So that's mm -hmm. absolutely crazy. So, and then... In, uh, on January 25th of 2022, it had been five months since that press conference and there's no arrest. There is a, there is a phone number and stuff. I, like I said, I will link this down below. So if you guys want to be, uh, active true crime, uh, members, you can do what you need to do, I guess. But there is a phone number and it says to feel free to give him a call and ask him, where is the justice for Jessica Easterly? I would also like to know the answer to that question. And then on April 30th, it's been exactly a year since he had the press conference. I wish I could say just to serve, but I can't. There's 60 cameras in Jessica's Lakeview neighborhood, and none of those cameras show how Jessica's body got to Kenilworth and Orleans. In fact, the detective said that none of those cameras show Jessica leaving her house. There have been no searches of a house or car or an arrest. 
please call the DA is what she's saying here. Um, this is by Jessica's sister, by the way. I don't think I mentioned that at the beginning. I believe she, the timeline is made by her at least. On the 22nd of August, 2022, it's been three years since Jessica's body was found. A bunch, there's, they have a bunch of mobile ads and stuff going up trying to kind of bring stuff to it then they had on september 26 22 2022 um you could call crime stoppers if you know anything and no tip is so small and or is too small and you can you can remain anonymous if you talk to crime stoppers and there's a phone number there as well it looks like on the 18th of november in 2022 a former detective and a journalist uh, along with a TV station, launched a new podcast called Undetermined in honor of Jessica. And at the beginning of last year, they created the online petition for um, made to the New York New Orleans mayor to call in the Louis the, 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 sorry the Louisiana State Police to investigate the murder. Sorry, that's the petition I signed. My bad. But I guess the Louisiana State uh, police said that they would help investigate, but only if they were called in by New Orleans mayor or like New Orleans police department. I don't know this whole thing. Like, I don't understand why you wouldn't just help. I don't know why you'd need to be called in. It just seems. Uh, like Different districts. That's yeah. why. So the unfortunately the way everything works is everybody has their own district and unless they're brought in on this case there's nothing they can actually do because of it being not in their jurisdiction yeah i don't know it's i think that that's crazy like i can understand why i guess but um it also looks like Justin was messaging with Maria on, um, like actually finally texted her through like his own phone number on the 19th, like right after she was found or had been missing. Um, and he says, Maria, you have no idea what I have been doing here on the ground with the people in positions to help. I appreciate the posters. And trust me when I tell you I have been nonstop. This is my whole life we are talking about. Whether you believe that is out of my control. And she said, let's get to know, like, who? What are the names of the police? What are the names so the police can coordinate with them to look for her? And Justin says, do you think I'm not on the phone or in person with the police? And then says, come on, Maria. And Maria says, you said you have people looking for her. Do you mean the police or friends of yours? I'm just not sure what people on the ground means. I'm trying to understand. And then he says, friends at the TV station here, I graduated with the head of K-9, chief of fire investigation. I don't have time to type all the people at this moment. The head of central casting, it goes on. So basically, he's trying to tell Maria that he's got people looking for his wife and so on and so forth. And it sounds like he doesn't. <laughs> But I really, when I felt true crimey today, I really wanted to talk about this one in particular because I feel like it's not talked about enough. I feel like people don't know enough about it. And I also feel like the Justin system is failing her and failing her family. And I feel like it's just ridiculous to me in this day and age with the technology we have with you know like all of that kind of stuff that we can't that we couldn't solve this and we haven't solved it yet that it's now 2024 and this was 2019 and we still don't know who killed her i mean my bet is honestly on her husband because he's acting weird it sounds like from what i watched in the documentary that she wasn't a very you know, like the adult content and stuff wasn't like a, a thing that she would do, according to her family. Like she was just a nice, like kind of innocent woman. And that wasn't like her type of thing that she would do. And they think that her husband pushed her into it. I don't know. He just doesn't sound like a very, he doesn't really sound like a very good guy. In my opinion, I mean, he that's doesn't sound like an opinion. upholding person at all. No, he 
he he sounds just weird and just the, the way that he's trying to get rid of his wife's clothes give it to another woman named jessica like just all of that seems so weird to me and like she was a human too she was a person she deserves she deserves justice like she didn't do anything to deserve this and we still don't even know what really happened to her other than the broken bones and the broken neck like obviously she must have been beaten or something and she was afraid of her husband to a point that she wanted to leave and asked her best friend to come get her so like obviously there's something there that made her want to get away from him and he was abusive to a point because like it said at the beginning he hit her and he she was just tired of tired of how he was acting and whatever but i just i don't understand how in the year of 2024 or even in the year of 2019 with the technology we have like with the dna evidence and stuff why you wouldn't be on top of that shit trying to figure this out it doesn't make any sense to me and why her husband took as long as he did to like do anything about reporting her missing like yeah okay he did he, he it seems like he did it within the 24 hours but i don't know like just the way he's acting is really weird and in the documentary i watched again which i will link so you guys can go watch it if you're more interested in this case josh went to his door and told him that he was a an independent journalist and he wanted he wanted a, a comment from justin's side because people wanted to know his side of things and before he could even get the name jessica easterly out that guy was closing his door so fast and it's like why don't you want justice for your wife why would you not want the people to know you're innocent if you didn't do anything wrong why like why are you acting so strange i don't know this whole thing is just really maddening and weird i don't know i just i feel like it's just really it's weird it's just a very sad story i think i just feel like it's just a very unfair, sad story, but it's just another person that's a s statistic in situations like this because, unfortunately, of a justice system. Yeah, yeah. It's very unfortunate. It sucks for her family. Like, if I, I, I don't have any siblings, but if that was me and... It was my sister that this happened to. Being a true crime person, I would also probably do everything Audrey has done. But I can't imagine how hard that must be. Not like it makes me angry reading that it took the police so long to do things, that the evidence took a million years to come back, that the detective didn't contact the people that found more evidence. But like, I can only imagine being the person that lost that person trying to get answers and you just keep coming up with nothing or getting f just told that they don't know yet or you know just giving really vague answers or not contacting you at all it just seems like there's no clearance there's no clarifying there's no it's just everything is just very bland answers like there is no relief there's no being able to rest easy like it's just it's a very sad situation that i feel like could have been prevented yeah yep definitely and like i have heard and i can understand that if you are in an abusive situation that sometimes it's not as easy as just leaving that maybe you feel obligated to stay like maybe she felt obligated to stay because of the daughter maybe she felt like i can't leave her with him so i'll stay and i'll take you know like i'll take the beatings or whatever instead maybe like sometimes it can be that the people feel that um, oh, well, you know, he's not, or they, I should say they, 
because it's not always a he you know they aren't always violent or they aren't always mean or whatever and then so they continue to stay and they continue to take it because they they make excuses and i've never been in the situation so i can't talk on it i am just going off of like things that i've read that have been researched when it comes to this kind of thing so like maybe it wasn't easy for her to leave so i can understand that but i just i think that the fact that maria at one point did ask for a welfare a welfare check on her friend and the police never went like they didn't even go and maybe had they she would still be around and we wouldn't be talking about her right now maybe you know her friend maria feels guilty and says like she should have just figured it out when she called her and gotten in her car and drove down there but we also don't know that that would have changed anything either as much as we would like to hope that it would have it's just stuff like this is so sad i also figured it was a good kind of thing to talk about for this week's podcast anyways just because i just finished the documentary that i was watching and i feel like more people need to know about this you know if you guys feel you can do something or maybe you know something or i don't know whatever you feel you can do like i said i will have the petitions linked down below if you guys would like to go sign them to get um the to, to get the police to look into this further and to get the louisiana state police in on it so that they can help investigate and maybe something will actually be discovered and you know good things will happen who knows but um i kind of just figured when it comes to small er cases or i feel like a case that doesn't have enough coverage this is kind of one of them and i kind of just wanted to get it out there and i might be a small creator but i figured it was a good thing to talk about see if we can't help however we can mm -hmm. and i just want to add to this like um before we end if anybody is in a situation like this and that you're scared to leave a situation where you are being abused, know that not everybody is bad or not everybody is not going to listen. There is people out there that are willing to help. There's hotlines that will help in need of situations like that. Please reach out to somebody, no matter how hard the situation situation may be for you if you feel like you can't if you feel like you're not gonna make it trust me no matter what that person is giving you you can live 10 times thousand times better and live your life free so please reach out for help whether it's the hotline for domestic domestic violence abuse please reach out to the hotlines or a loved one or a friend or if anybody that you know that can help you reach out as soon as you can because you never know you know you mm -hmm. never know what can happen mm -hmm. 100 percent, i agree i will I'll put some um hotlines down below as well um in case anybody needs them i hope you don't but if you do please do utilize it but i i want to also add to that that it might seem hopeless you might seem you might think that it's something you can't get through or that it's just going to end up worse for you but there are things out there there are people out there who are willing to help who will listen to you and i can understand that it might be scary it might be hard but you have to do what's best for you and remember that you know you can be safe and happy and free and not having to deal with things like that so i definitely also agree that you should reach out to anyone that you can even if it's just a family member or a friend like jessica did in this case she reached out she reached out to maria to ask for help and unfortunately it didn't work out the way we would hope in her case but it doesn't mean that it can't for you and I can understand that times like that are probably scary. I've never been through it myself, thank God. But, you know, we, we want everybody to stay safe. And I don't like you're having... You're important. Yeah, you're important. And 
you're loved and you mean something to somebody. So just do what you have to do and try to, if you need anybody, um, there are hotlines and such that you can reach out to or family members or friends should you need to. Someone will listen. You may not think that they will, but somebody will listen. There's, yeah. There is hope and there is is life beyond that so don't feel like you're obligated for that situation because you're not there's life beyond that and let me tell you life beyond that is 10 a million times better than what you're suffering in mm -hmm. so there look is. to the brighter side of that it may suck for a little while it may be hard for a little while but you'll get past that and you'll be able to live your life mm -hmm. so and just remember, guys, that there is always a light at the end of the tunnel, no matter how dark mm -hmm. the tunnel might be. Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> so that was our long ass conversation about Jessica Easterly. If you guys, like I said, if you know anything, um, maybe you have some tips or even if it's just as simple as sharing this podcast so that we can get the word around some more. I'm sure Kendall and Josh have done an amazing job of that already, as Kendall did. She did do a whole episode herself on her YouTube channel about Jessica Easterly, so I'll link you to that as well. And just getting the, the word spread about stuff like this is why I like to talk about it. I feel like even telling, you know, a person here or there is helpful in some way, and I feel like it, it can help somehow. To the, the next case. person mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or awareness even, yeah awareness will always help mm -hmm. and it's good to just spread the word in general because you know have the awareness just like Tammy said so hopefully um you guys enjoyed this episode i know it was a little random and uh kind of diverts from a spook hour but then again true crime is spooky so <laughs> I think we'll kind of like throw true crime episodes in here and there because both Sammy and I are very interested in it. So I think it could be an interesting addition to things. If there's any that you guys uh, want us to talk about or want us to cover and put them uh, in the description, not the description, the comments down below and we will um, see what we can do about that. But uh, I think this yeah. is... The end for us today dear ghoulies yes we come to an end <laughs> and like always we always say right yep don't forget to lock your doors take under your beds check your closets because you never know what's lurking in the dark until we night, meet ghoulies. again <laughs> good night ghoulies bye ghoulies